Now we're headed now uh, deeper into Ramallah uh, because uh, a former minister uh, of the Palestinian uh, uh, administration uh, has agreed to meet us and speak to us. We're going to get some more voices as well. Uh, uh, he's someone who is regarded as a famous poet. I've known him from, from before during my university days. Uh, he's also a professor and we're going to be speaking to him along with some others. Uh, to tell you what I said we were going to do to get you voices from the other side. Now remember here in India today we're reporting what we see, what we hear both from Israel as well as Palestine. You've seen all of our reportage from Israel and you will continue to do so in the days and the weeks ahead and now we're getting you some voices from inside the administrative capital of Palestine. And joining me now is a person whose name is Ahab Basai. So he isn't just any politician. He's a person who's been a minister in a Palestinian government uh, not very long ago. He's regarded as one of Palestine's foremost poets. He's also a professor at the Bethlehem University, and he's agreed to see us here in Ramallah. Uh, continuing uh, with the conversation, uh, Ahab, how does one see what happened on October the 7th by Hamas, if not as a terror attack? Well, in order not to be trapped in the question of violence and uh, the condemnation and the circle of condemnation, what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. put things into the context. Uh, Gaza was subjected to several bombardments and incursions in the past. In 2021, there was no 7th of October. In 2018, there was no 7th of October. In 2014, there was no 7th of October. In 2012, there was no 7th of October. And in 2008, there was 7th of October. The amount of victims who have been killed as a result of the Israeli bombardments on Gaza actually exceeds the number of 10,000 people enduring all these wars. This, let alone what is happening right now in Gaza, which is, till we speak, now the death toll is about more than 7,000 people that they were called by the indiscriminate shelling. Now, the question about, we need to put it into a political context. There is an occupation, and this occupation is using all the forces and the measures against the Palestinian people to undermine the right of an independent state. Having said this, it doesn't mean that the Palestinians, they are not, they are kind of um, um, a killing uh, cheers, a cheer, cheer holders or something or just waving for this. The Palestinians in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem and in Gaza, they are just seeking some kind of an international acknowledgement of their pain over the last 56 years. And they just wanted a courageous statement by the international community to say, well, the Palestinians, they deserve under their own state. Enough is enough in the occupation and adhere to international community. So this is the wider context that I think what the Israeli government right now is trying to do is just to shift the public opinion or the international public opinion from the question of occupation. How do you see that? How do you respond as a Palestinian to Israel saying that what we are doing now is in response to Hamas, not the Palestinian people? Well, um, I'll be very honest and frank with you on this. We, we will try to borrow some of the experiences from the past. When the Americans in, tw in 2001, they started their bombardment of Afghanistan, they said the same. They said it's not about the Afghan people, it's about the Taliban. To figure out after 20 years, they sat with the Taliban and they set an agreement with the Taliban after a few years. Yeah. They did it with Iraq. Yeah. They said this is not a war with the Iraqis, this is a war with Saddam Hussein. Mm. And eventually, the whole killing and the whole misery of the Iraqis, it's still paying the price till now. What I want to say, this is something of a part of a communication strategy. It, it's part of the deceiving of the whole international public opinion about the core of the issue, which is occupation. We heard from Mr. Biden, the American president, and many of international prime ministers and presidents that they are with a two-state solution. Yeah. Perfect. Including w India. Including India. Perfect. Okay. What are the measures that need to be taken in mm. order to implement the United Nations resolutions and in order to have the two-state solution? This is a very simple question. Yeah. It's not enough just to issue a statement that I'm supporting a two-state solution. We have to see it on the ground. So seeing it on the ground is something that what we need is to put some pressure on this Israeli government, the occupation government of Palestine, to say, well, implement United Nations resolutions and grant these Palestinians their right to live as normal human beings in the world and to allow them to have at least 
some kind of a confidence of the future that the international community is respecting their desire to have their own state in Palestine. There is suspense over a ground invasion uh, you know, which has happened twice before 2009 and 2014 as you know. Uh, uh, where are things going? You know, how, how do people in Palestine see how this is going to be? Because the sense is this is going to make things much worse. But how do you see it playing out? Well, I think it is uh, now the Palestinian question has been linked to regional and international a lot of political interests. And we, we cannot just ignore this fact. We could see that the veto being um, issued yesterday by uh, the Russians and the Chinese against the American veto earlier. So this is something of a wider, a wider international conflict. We cannot see what is happening in Palestine in, in, in vacuum of from ha what's happening in the world, particularly the Russian Ukrainian war, uh, what is the role of uh, Europe and American in this kind of a conflict. We cannot even separate it from um, regional interests in Iran and, and a lot of regional powers. So it's either we try to say that the Palestinian cause, this pain should end, and then there should be awakening in, 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 the, in uh, the international community's politics to say, well, at least this is something that might trigger more of a conflict in the region, not only in Palestine mm -hmm. and Israel. It also might con you conduct a lot of e issues, even in the Arab region. You heard about the attacks on American bases in Iraq, yeah. in Syria, now things about the Red Sea and Yemen. So this is something it's it's somehow need to be addressed with wisdom i think back an urgency to say back to the table of politics and then discussing how to end the occupation yeah. president abbas said it yeah. a few times on on the platform of the united nations i mean now there's nothing to negotiate about it's about the role of the international community to say give me a time schedule to end the occupation and that's that's all about it and i think we are calling upon all the people not saying the friend not only the friends of palestine we're calling upon the people in the international community to say justice should prevail by the fact that this pain should end perhaps the only way this cycle of violence that's been on for so many decades can end uh, is if there is an incentive for the international community. We're seeing the beginnings of that beyond just the Arab world, uh, beyond just uh, uh, you know the region and Asia. If there are direct quantifiable incentives to a lasting mutual solution between Israel and Palestine, that is perhaps the only way that something can actually happen. For the moment, October the 7th and Israel's response in Gaza has focused the world's attention once again. For how long it'll last, we don't know. We've seen violence happen before. The media has been in this area in their thousands, and then they all go away, and then everything just starts all over again. Hopefully, this time, it won't be the case. Ihab, thank you very much for speaking to India today. Your voice will go out to millions, and we've been getting voices from both sides over the last few days. Let's hope people are listening and let's hope for peace. Thank you. Thank you very much.